Look. See that crease line? That is gorgeous. Yeah, that is nice. So I'm going to give that another press. Here is the pants that I'm going to be changing into a long maxi skirt. Um, this slip can be on wherever you want it to be. Um, I'll, I'll give more advice and tips towards the end of the video, so keep watching. Um, but the first thing to do is to try it on and see how it fits. I wouldn't get anything that's too fitted. Yeah, you want a little bit of room. Well, you can do. It's not impossible. You can do. It all depends on what kind of style you're going for. If you want something that's not too skimping towards your contour, contour. The what's the word? The words escape me. I'm sorry. Um, if you don't want it to fit tight, <laughs> tight around your body, then. Do do consider um, the kind of shape that you're going to go for when it comes to the pants. Yes, I think that's the best way for me to say it. Okay, so let's get back to the pants. So, um, they are great on me. I like the fit. So, the first one we're going to need, you guessed it, yeah, is a seam ripper. I've got mine here. So, we're going to be unpicking to begin with the front seam, the inside seam of the pants. So we are going to open up the inside seam legs to begin with and then once we've done that we will be putting the front and back legs together and sewing it all the way down to the hemline. So let's get that done first. Let me get my seam ripper, insert it. And let's just start on picking. I do have a video tutorial in how to unpick, so do give that a watch if you are not comfortable using a seam ripper or it's the first time. I hope you are well. If you are new to my channel, my name is Colleen G. Lee. I'm all about inspiring, motivating and sharing ideas to upcycle fashion. So if you are into that sort of thing, it definitely is worthwhile considering subscribing to my channel. Not only that, I'm also on the Patreon platform where there are three different levels. Please check the description for more details. The inside seams are now open, the front and the back. So we now need to match the front to the front and the back to the back, like so. So this is a front, just lay them as flat as possible. I'll put some pins in just to make sure that they are matching. So the original seam. There's going to be a little bit of waste here because I'll be cutting this away. But you want to make sure that it's even on both sides. There we go. So we want to create a straight line now. So I'll get my meter stick, yard stick, and we're going to place it along the crutch sew stitch line here. 
and take it all the way down to the hem and then draw a straight line all the way I think I may just try and just you don't want it to be too distorted but you want it to go as close as to the original seam if possible and then just repeat it on the back let me just show you that so with the back crotch area it's the same process just make sure you're matching up the original seams just put a few pins in like so okay and then that's a case of doing the same on the back going to get a bit more wastage here well that could possibly be an inverted seam we shall see I'll give it a go I won't cut this out I won't cut this away just yet I don't think I'll be able to apply the same to a front of the skirt but you can definitely try with the back which will be better because you'll be able to walk you have a better stride in your walk let's say right I'm gonna keep it to about there so anything I'll probably stitch to about here and then I'm going to continue marking all the way down to the hemline and I'm going to put a temporary stitch so I will machine I will machine stitch from this point to this from this point to this point and from this point down to the hemline I'll do a temporary stitch which will be pulled out and that will create the inverted pleat and um, I don't think I'll be able to do that with the front I'm going to try and let's see how it looks because it is a little bit about aesthetics and I'm trying not to create any waste so take it to the sewing machine and sew to there and then just do a hand um, sewing stitch to there and I do the same on the front. I have machine sewn the front and also the back to the point of where I want to create an inverted pleat and from that point down all the way to the hemline I've hand basted so that I can create a nice crease when I come to press both to the front and also the back so what I need to do now is fit okay taking little baby steps <laughs> It looks good. This is the front. Just the seam just down the centre front. So I seam, show you the back. 
the only thing is I can't I'm, I literally am hobbling so I do want to take bigger strides I'm going to include the inverted pleats to front and back and see what that looks like but it's a pot, if you want to cut it away then that's your choice but I'm going to try and see if I'm happy with keeping the excess fabric and then having inverted pleats to the front and back but it's a nice silhouette though yeah so I want bigger strides so I'm going to put a pin ooh, to where I'm going to unpick the seam so my knee is here I want it somewhere just where my knee is yes yeah, so my knee when I walk it will kick out the pleat the slit I should say yeah maybe just a little bit higher actually yeah there that should be fine yeah so what do I need to do next I need to sew down the seam, the original seams, front and back, and then unpick the side seam to where the pin is, and I'll come back and show you my <laughs> baby steps, which will no longer be baby steps, toddler steps. <laughs> The next step for me to do is, now that that is sewn, is to press along my temporary stitch line. Then I'm going to take it to my ironing board and just press that open like so, so that I can create a crease line that is going to be part of the inverted pleat. And then I'll sew the original seams back together and that will enable me to create the inverted pleat. We also unpicked the crotch area here to this point here so that enables me to get it flat so I can create the pleat. So that's what I'm going to do to the front and also the back. The inverted pleats are done, front, back, the slit. Slit was just a case of just unpicking and then just securing that stitch with a straight stitch across like so. But no, I'm happy with that. Really am. Let me just show you. Um, let me just where well, I'll get a pin. Let me just show you the crease line. I think it's important for me to show you the crease line on the front because you can't really tell from here. See where I pressed it. But I'm going to give it another press. So I'm not going to take it all the way down. Just put it through to the right side oh, look see that crease line that is gorgeous yeah that is nice so I'm going to give that another press now I'm thinking here am I going to have some hand sewing to do which as you know that I don't mind but I want a straight line so I've got an option where they can just go straight across or go diagonally. Mm. 
I think I'm going to go straight across from there to there. So I'll put a pin in there, take it to my sewing machine and just do a straight stitch across and also the same to the back. The inverted pleats have been stitched down. This is the front right side. Let me show you the back. Straight across the slit. Where's the slit? At the side. There we go. I'll quickly show you the inside. That's what the inverted pleat looks like. And the, where's the slit? And there's the slit. What I need now to do is to try it on so you can see how these gorgeous pleats actually fall the front and the back. is gorgeous it works the inverted pleat it does even though it takes us down to the hemline where there's literally isn't a room for the pleats the fold of fabric to me it's just plain it's just flat I should say it's still gorgeous that's nice. A little bit more pressing needs to happen in this area here. It's not quite lined as flat. But that is gorgeous. Let's have a look at the back. That is just, yeah, that works. And they've got the slit. Yeah, that's. That's nice. That is nice. And my stride, my walking. Yeah, that's okay. That's good. I like that. Yeah, definitely a good project. I'll stop now. <laughs> I'll just do it like twirl. So if you want to know how I'm going to style this, you have to watch my Friday videos where I do my outfits of the week. And you can see what footwear I wear in it and what I wear at the top part of me. Yes, happy. Another successful project, yes, um, it's nice, I like it. There is one or two issues that you need to consider when you are doing this project. The first one is going to be the pants, the style of pants that you get in order to do this project and also the end result, how far you want that slip to be, that slip to be up your leg or down whatever you prefer is going to be dependent on the style of pants that you go for so for instance if you want to be able to walk and have longer strides and um, the slit is an issue of how high you want it to be then you need to be working with a fuller length pants so think along the lines of the palazzo pants which is very full there's a lot of fabric in palazzo pants so if you're wanting that kind of style then that's what you need to go for the pants that i'm working with is not completely a straight leg because it does taper in at the hemline but not greatly but for me i want the slit to stay where it is so therefore there is a bit of hobbling that's going with it. So I don't mind that. Um, if I did, then it would be a case of getting the slit to be a lot higher up my leg, which I don't want. But it's your project, so it's dependent on you. So do check the description for links to the inverted pleat. It will help you um, 
and it means a little bit more work from you to figure it out but that's what fashion sewing is all about and refashioning don't forget to do um the hand stitching it's important to do a hand stitching especially fitting and then at the end you have this beautiful looking garment so don't don't skip that don't skip that at all uh let's see is there anything else i can think of um no there isn't there really isn't so if you have any comments or queries that you want to ask me put those in the comment box below because i'd love to see what your project looks like so do um what is it tag me yes do tag me and yeah i'd love to see what you actually produce for my videos so don't forget if you found this video helpful then please give it a thumbs up please like this video and also while you're giving it a thumbs up below the like button is this red button it says um subscribe click on that and you can become a subscriber on my channel which means that every time i upload a video you will get a notification as long as you press that bell so you won't miss any videos how amazing is that so don't forget like subscribe share this video tell all your friends about this video and i will see you next time with the next project Thank you for watching.